Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Square Wave 2. I have been collecting, restoring and reselling shortwave receivers for almost 30 years. I have over a hundred receivers in my collection, mostly from the 1940s to the 1970s. What I look for most when buying a receiver is the number of tubes it has and the number of controls it has. Yes, I love tubes and I love controls. Today I'd like to show you something from my collection that's completely different. It's a receiver with no tubes and very few controls. And here it is, the Kenwood Double Conversion Communications Receiver R1000, sometimes considered Kenwood's best receiver. It was made between 1979 and 1985. It sold for $430 up to $499. They sure hold their value. You can find them today on eBay in the $300 to $400 price range. This receiver is neat and compact. It weighs only 12 pounds. It can be set up anywhere. It's not very big. The case has a very practical design. This handle can be used to safely move the receiver or it can be turned down to provide a comfortable operating angle. The R1000 is incredibly rugged. Shortly after my brand new R1000 was out of the box, my cat knocked it off the table. It fell three feet and landed upside down on a hardwood floor. Dylan, my shop assistant, is not the cat I'm referring to. It was another cat. Well, I was furious, but upon examination, I found it had suffered no physical damage and it operated just fine. Amazing! The R1000 was incredibly easy to use. It had no extra bells and whistles. Let's take a look at the front panel. The Kenwood R1000 came with a built-in clock and a built-in timer, which are set with these controls here. This is the push button for power on off. This is the push button to start your timer. Down here you have the headphone jack, a recording jack, a dimmer switch, a noise blanker switch. Here is your S meter, signal strength meter. Up here is your frequency readout in megacycles and kilocycles. This is the control for tuning. Up here you have a concentric control for volume and tone. Down here we have four different modes of operation, AM wide, amplitude modulation wide, AM narrow, upper sideband, and lower sideband. Here is a 29 position band switch covering 200 kilocycles to 30 megacycles. Here is the one fault I can find with this receiver. This is an RF attenuation switch beginning with 20 decibels of RF attenuation. Well, I have yet to find a signal strong enough to withstand 20 decibels of attenuation. What this control really does is shut down everything. Turning the radio around, you see connectors for long wire antennas, one for broadcast band, one for short wave. This is a coaxial antenna connection. Here is a jack for your external speaker, and this jack would come into play if you wanted to silence your receiver while using your transmitter. Over here is where the AC line connects, here is your fuse, and down here you have your operating voltage selector. This receiver is quite versatile and will operate almost anywhere. It will operate on 100 volts, 120 volts, 220 volts, or 240 volts AC. Up here is your speaker behind a heavy-duty plastic grill. And this is the mystery black panel. No one knows for sure what is behind the mystery black panel. Even the instruction manual makes no mention of the mystery black panel. You see, it is really a mystery. The Kenwood R1000 is a great little performer. Its simplicity makes it perfect for the casual or first-time shortwave listener. You have to admire its efficient, clean design. Let's listen to it on 80 meters single sideband. Thanks for watching. Wear your masks and please stay well. What was his name? Oh, his call sign.
sign. Uh, his name was Jim, and his call sign was WA6DTZ. I never heard, but you know, when I, um, when I, I almost got cornered at the highway, I...